So the next point which uh, I really want to discuss is how the binaries are created. Whenever some agitation starts or whenever uh, some protest is happening, how the binaries are created, what is violence and what is non-violence. On the 26th of November, when we started from Punjab to come to Delhi and we've been sitting on the uh, b um, borders of Delhi since past uh, couple months now, on the 26th of November, the intensity and the gravity of this agitation was much more than what it was on the 26th of January. But that was not violent. Nobody felt the violence then because there was no violence. But when, as per your convenience, you had to create a binary and create some issues out of it, media wanted their stories, political uh, parties wanted their issues, then it became a violent protest or it was a violence. I want to understand what violence was there within the Red Fort. What violence was there when we were going towards our tractor um, march? Who finalized the, the roadmap? I started where I was at night at 11 o'clock in the morning because at 7 a.m. I went and slept on the 25th night and that was virtually, not virtually, but 26th morning. I slept for a couple of hours when and when I started on the way, I got this information that everyone has reached Red Fort. Now, I want to understand if everyone was there and which they were and I can prove it, all the farmer union leaders were there, so-called social activists were there. Everyone was there. I did not see any violence on the way. Yes, there was a little bit of violence or some incidents elsewhere, but towards Red Fort, there was nothing. There must be some water cannons. There must be a little bit of, uh, you know, breaking the barricades, but that's not called violence. We've done much more on the 26th of November. Why it was never called a violence then? Because it never suited you then. So what is this happening, these double standards, this kind of hypocrisy? Where do we get it from? This is how we are going to deal with uh, issues. This is how we are going to deal with social, political, environmental, even for that matter, um, you know, our, our physical issues. And what I also want to understand that in the world of... Uh, um, thinkers and the and the intellectuals they have been time and again over the period of years writing books that how do you have to analyze and what is a process of analyzing such important social events but how do we analyze we always associate it with people because we need somebody to blame and that's how I was blamed for it and again, I'm saying, am I a terrorist that I'm booked for? Am I somebody who um, was provocating somebody? Am I someone who went and damaged or threatened anybody? No, I was handling the situation. The only one, one face over there. And that's why my people requested me that please come and handle the situation because it can go out of hand. So I went and handled the situation. I can also show and it is there on my Facebook page, the speech and the words I've spoken from Red Fort. Time and again, I was repeating, be peaceful. We got to sit here. Let's wait for our farmer union leaders. But nobody, they all were outside, but nobody had come in because nobody wanted to take the responsibility. But I can share the speeches which were probably given. I can also share a lot of these meetings which they held with the government of India. I don't know what is going on. I was not part of those meetings. So please question either the establishment or the farmer union leaders. I was the only known face and I handled the situation with a lot of courage and then I was blamed. This is ridiculous. And thereafter, because Earlier, I used to talk in Punjabi, but thereafter, when I went out of um, that place, 
I went and sat on a tractor and started addressing in Hindi because I wanted a national media and people all over the country to to hear and know what the truth is. Nobody heard it because it was not a space because such a propaganda started against me. I do not know. Are we that insensitive? Where is humanity? Who is provocating? And who? why are you guys uh, putting blames in terms of that, look, this guy is a radical or he is a terrorist. I'm a Sikh and we've been raised with this principle where it was taught manas ki jat sabbe eko pehachanbo. Recognize the entire human race as one. This is universal. This is not radical. We were taught Guru Nanak Dev Ji's principle saying Sarbat Dapala. So this is what we believe in. This is how I've been raised. No, we are not radicals. We are not anti-national. We are not uh, terrorists. We were just protesting against a policy which government is implementing and peacefully since last six months. And that's our democratic right. But look at our media, the journalism, how they portrayed everything in a bad light because why they wanted their viewership, they wanted TRP. They were after me to give interviews. I did not give interview to anybody. I gave one and then after that I decided, no, I'm not going to because the way they're dealing with it, the way they are portraying the whole thing. And I wanted to point out, especially Mr. Ravish Kumar, I thought you are a responsible man and a responsible journalist, but I'm disappointed the way you dealt with this issue. Did you talk to me? You spoke about me. I was called a traitor. He did not bother to talk to me because why? Because their story had to go in the prime time. Such irresponsible behavior. This is the fourth pillar of a democracy, the media. And the political ideologies are running it. You guys have that division. That's a certain uh, probably media houses or group of media belongs to one political party and a certain belongs to another political party. This is how a country works. This is how you guys create a narrative and then people are forced to believe it because this is they'll only know what you'll show. Nobody will show the truth. They'll only show what is selling today. I am seriously amazed and shocked. What, where are we going? What kind of future are we building? You think we can shape up a good future for ourselves, for our generations to come? I, I don't think so. So, and based on two photos which were clicked during Mr. Sunny Deol's campaign, one with the Prime Minister, another with the Home Minister. You guys have made me a BJP or RSS man that I've been planted. This is your intellect and your standards. This is how a planted man would work. The kind of issues I have raised. And what was it? An empty flag post. I am a citizen of this country. Red Ford belongs to me as well, as much as it belongs to you. And I being a citizen of this country and a person who was known, a person who pre probably people would listen a little bit, went over there and handled the situation. Before me, the entire process already started that pe our people saw an empty flag post. All what they have done, they've put Nishan Saab and farmer's flag over there. And the national flag was already there. Nobody touched it. Nobody disrespected it. But how it was all portrayed that we are actually there to disrespect our national flag. We are there uh, causing violence. We are threatening the cops. On the contrary, those cops were thanking me because I was the one who was handling the situation with them. Nobody want, 
wanted to knew wanted to know the truth nobody knew the truth can we be more responsible can we be more accountable more compassionate more caring towards one another can we stop dealing with issues like this with such insensitive um um what do you call it behavior i think we it's time for us to change i've been running away from cops why see my track record i was a law student became a lawyer started practicing practiced in bombay high court practiced in supreme court with so called every name mr salve to mukul rothgi to aryama sundaram to to mr um, mr u u v lalit to mr a um, lot of others i went and briefed all of them and today where am i sitting in some in some haryana village in some kotha with a family which is staying in the farms and i'm on the roads running away from cops and what have i done that i raised these issues i pointed out certain um uh, atrocities in the system the kind of suppression and repression is there in the system i really request you guys to think about it that's all i just wanted to share a little bit and then you know during lockdown when we had covid 19 situation you guys lot of lot of these guys would look at nishan saab and they would go towards it because there was a gurdwara saab where langar was getting served then you did not have a problem from that nishan saab when a army goes and fights the chinese at the border they carry nishan saab then you don't have a problem but when we are asking for our rights and nishan saab farmers flag indian flag is there all three spirits are fighting this together then you think it's religious no it's not religious it's a way of life it's that diversity which we have in this country and we call it unity in diversity kindly do not tolerate diversity accept it acceptance is more important than tolerance tolerance portrays arro arrogance we really need to think about these uh, issues we really have to be uh, a good human beings and believe in humanity rather than getting divided and saying that oh so and so is a hardliner or he's a terrorist or he's a khalistani or so and so you guys take care thank you so much Thank you.